Hello and welcome back to another part of design your own level tutorial. In this video, what we'll be doing is we'll be creating our curved display, as you can see over here, and we will be adding a gloss material to it. And then we will add a separate video overlay that we'll use um, and we'll just loop like a random video inside of it over there. Now, this is a very impractical display as it is hanging from the roof at like a, it looks level uh, over here, like perfect. So unpractical, but it looks cool. So we're going to go with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to, if you haven't watched the videos before, you'll notice that this is the scene we originally set up. We blocked out our level with these walls over here. We exported the walls to Unreal Engine 4, or sorry, not to Unreal, to Blender itself. And we use those as a reference. So you see that we put this onto a separate layer and we're just going to use that as reference. And the way for you to like highlight both your layers is just holding shift and then selecting them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm immediately going to just check what the sizes are. So if you judge by the video that we have, that probably goes to roughly about halfway through the wall. So somewhere along the lines of here, our couch is not in the same position, but you're looking at somewhere along the lines of here. And if we go back to Blender itself, you'll see that our wall, wall is actually perfectly uh, divided in half. So that should actually be easy for us to use as a measuring tool. So pushing Shift C just to center our view, I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to add a Bezier curve. I'm going to take this curve, I'm just going to move it up. Then what I want to do is I am going to grab this point and move it down and rotate it by 90 degrees. And this point, I'm going to move it up and rotate that by 45 degrees. And now you see it's got like a strange curve to it. We can try and straighten this curve if we want to, but if you actually look at the video, you'll see that the curve actually starts fairly well, halfway through that piece over there. So the curve pretty much, if we're going to judge by the wall, the curve pretty much starts roughly about there. But now that curve looks completely ridiculous. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hit A to select both and we're going to hit W and then subdivide. And then we're just holding control, we're going to drag this out until we're satisfied with the curve that we wanted to give. If you give it too little of a curve, then it might not look good. It might look like it's a, a, a wall. So you want to kind of like give it like this elongated curve. But what's nice about this is we can always come back and edit it if it doesn't work properly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to extrude this one and I'm going to extrude this one as well. Now I just kind of want to judge that this is roughly about over there, midway through the wall. So if we look at the amount of units, that's uh, Blender units, one, two, three, four, five, six. So from here we want one, two, three, four, five, six. Now it's not quite on six, that is on five. So I'm going to grab that and move it down. So it's six units and six units over there. So now we kind of got like a perfect size for it. So that's our curve that we're going to work with. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add a mesh to it. That's just going to follow along in a, a kind of a line around it. So what we're going to add is we're going to hit shift a, let's just center this again, shift a, we're going to add a normal cube mesh and what I want to do is I want it to follow this curve over here. So we're going to click the cube and I'm going to set an array modifier. First of all, the array modifier just gives us an option for the cube to repeat itself. So as you can see over there. Now I'm going to set this to one just for now because I, I don't really want to change anything directly now using this. Uh, but what I want to add as well is a curve modifier. And then when you look at the curve modifier, what you want to set the object to is the Bezier curve. 
and now we'll see that it's at a random point over there where do we want it i think we want it actually on the z-axis but we are going to have to like just go through these and see um, negative x doesn't look okay there's another thing that we just quickly want to test out the origin point for the cube is the center of the world, but the origin point for the Bezier curve is not the center of the, the world. And because we want the cube to follow the Bezier curve, they both need the same origin point. Now, on the cube, it's easy. You can select it. If it doesn't have the same origin point, you can see if it's like over there, you can just hit Alt, sorry, uh, not Alt D, Alt G. Here, I just need to delete that one. So let's just repeat that again. If you hit Alt G, then it will center it. But if you hit Alt G, with this it will center the entire object to the center of the world. So while it still follows and you think that uh, everything is all fine and dandy and you're happy, but if you want it to be at that point and later on you're going to move it, it's going to move like that. I think maybe if you move it in edit mode, it should be fine. So all right so we can actually go with that but the other way that you can center your origin point is just by making sure it's in the center of the world selecting your object and then click center or set origin to um to, 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 to 3d cursor and then you'll see essentially the same thing happens over there but now again move it around same thing so you can use both methods. I want to keep it like this because we're going to use this as our reference to just see what it looks like. So I think that um, using the second method is the best one for this particular scenario. All right, so now we're just going to go back to our cube and we're gonna go back to our array. And actually, if we look at the array is stacking now on the wrong position. So what we want it to do is we'll just pick one of these I think it's there we go we're gonna pick um, this should be the x-axis and then we're gonna go to our fit curve type so instead of a fixed count we're gonna fit to the curve select the bezier curve and now you'll see that actually we have a lot more detail because uh, it's following the curve itself so what I'm going to do now, it seems like it's slightly longer on that side than what it is on this side. Um, not too sure why that is, but that gives us an opportunity to actually bring this one in a little bit. But then it brings that one out. It's very strange. It's not going to be too, too much of a hassle. We can always just delete the additional detail afterwards. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I actually want to change our cube. And, and now you can actually see how the array follows. So the way we have to change our cube is let's scale on the X axis quickly. And this is an edit mode. So if we go back to object mode, you'll see that, okay, it's scaling on a completely random axis. So let's scale on the Y axis and see what that looks like. All right, the Y axis is something that we want. And then we want to scale it on the Z axis. Okay, so effectively it's like flipped our cube around. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Let me just undo these scalings. And so on the Z axis, if we scale in, it scales and it makes it thinner. So that is what we want to start with. We want to scale our cube roughly. I would say that it should be about two centimeters or two and a half centimeters thick. So we can actually just check here. I'm going to scale this in on the Z axis. And then we can go back over here and see how thin. It's not too thin. Uh, so I'm gonna have to zoom in a little bit more to get a bit more detail. I think this is effectively uh, 20 centimeters. Each one of these blocks is 10 centimeters. So I'm going to scale it a little bit more till I get to something like there. That's two centimeters. That's very thin, 
for the display, but actually that might be perfect. Uh, I think I am just going to actually scale it up somewhere along the lines of there, so halfway, so it's about three centimeters. And we'll see. Okay, so now we got our curve there. Everything looks good. But now we want a bit more resolution on this side because obviously you can see it's like separate separate parts. So I want slightly bit more resolution. And that we got when we scaled on the y-axis. So I'm going to scale on the y-axis and effectively I want this to be two units, which is going to be 20 centimeters. And if we look at it over here, You'll see that there we go that actually looks pretty good i'm very happy with that so i'm going to take this and just enable smooth shading but you'll see that that looks terrible the reason why it looks terrible is because it's enabling smooth shading on every single part of that particular mesh um, so what i'm going to do is okay well let's first get to ignoring that part because we're done using the reference i am going to now just use this as a mesh so the way i did it is i need to convert this to a, a a usable mesh but before we carry on we just want to create a duplicate of everything in the scene so the way i create a duplicate is just to select everything hit shift d and you can see we created a duplicate just right click and push M and then move that to an empty layer. So now if you go to that layer, you'll see that our mesh is over there, just in case we need to come back to it. Now, there are, uh, there's a slight bit of a problem when I created a curve like this, and I'll, I'll show you how that, um, how it turns out now. Basically what you want to do is in your array modifier, you want to set your options to merge. And then you want to apply your array modifier and your um, curve and everything. And now if you look at it, that that is your final model. That is exactly the way we want to use it. If you enable smooth shading, you'll see it looks okay. But it's a little bit dark. And the reason why it's dark is because the normals are inverted. So if we go back and we invert and recalculate our normals, you'll see that, okay, but that doesn't look right. And the reason why that doesn't look right is actually, I'll, I'll quickly show you. We're going to go into the side view. I'm just going to hold and drag and like select everything from this side. Sorry, I want to enable face select mode. Everything like so, and I'm going to click hide. Then I'm going to go onto this side and I'm going to select everything and click hide. Now what you'll see is that in between every single plane, what basically what it did is it created a area like this and that's going to cause a lot of problems if you want to try and smooth things out so for me how to solve this is just to go into Z uh, wireframe mode drag everything and select it hit delete delete the faces and then alt H to unhide the faces we hit before and now we can quickly see there we go we actually managed to get all of them in one go so now we have our nice smooth corner and this is actually ready for us to just quickly test an Unreal Engine 4. So let's get to doing that. I want to test this in Unreal Engine 4. Uh, the only thing is, this pivot point is kind of an, an, a weird location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it and then move it to around about there. And we don't need to worry about anything else anymore because we are basically finished with the model. But what I want to do is uh, remember that Unreal uses the center of the world as the pivot point for your model. So if we move it like this, then it basically means that that corner over there will be the center of our model itself. So let's quickly test this. I'm just going to select it. I'm going to hit File, Export, FBX. Uh, I think I already tested a copy of it before. There we go. Display test. I'm just going to overwrite it. Remember, the main settings is going to stay. Um, selected objects, geometries on edge detect, and an armature disable leaf bones. Click export. I'm going to jump over to Unreal. Just going to my models tab. I'm going to click import. And there it is. Where is it? 
uh, display test. There we go. We're going to click import. Now remember, we don't have any texture or anything applied to this whatsoever. I'm going to drag it into the world. And now we can just basically see what it looks like. Now, if you followed one of all, well, one, but all of the other tutorials, you'll see that we generally have to like set our scale for everything inside of Unreal just a little bit larger. Now, the reason I, I don't know why that is, everything is actually to scale in meter wise, but it's just that Unreal's camera and the characters seems a little bit larger. So the basic scale that I've been using is 1.25. Um, so basically make everything about 25% larger. So if we use that as our reference and we move it in and just place it where it basically was inside of the world in um, Mirror's Edge and we hit play. Let me see. Well, there we go. We got our display inside of the game level. It looks a little bit large. We can maybe have gone with keeping it smaller instead of doing the 1.25 scaling. We could have kept it at the one scaling, but actually uh, with the screen larger, it adds a little bit of a different dimension to the way that we want it. And with the thing being transparent, you don't really see it um, as part of the world. It, it doesn't really affect your vision or anything like that. So, uh, well, uh, what we're going to do in the next one is we're going to do some UV unwrapping and then we're going to get into creating a material for it. So I'm going to leave that for an, for another video. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't, you can leave a dislike. Uh, please subscribe and then I will see all of you in the next video.